Alright guys, how are we? What is going on? And welcome back. Welcome back to another video. Uh, my name's Jacob, this is my YouTube channel, and this video is going to be about certain things I noticed whilst I was dieting down to 5% body fat um, during a bodybuilding prep. So I competed in two bodybuilding shows this year, one in August and one in October. It is now November, and I am basically making a, fair, a few videos, uh, you know, post-show, talking about my experience, talking about, but talking about things that my body went through, talking about positives, negatives, everything. Because I want to get it in video form, I want to put it on the channel so that, you know, it's done. I can work through it, I can move on. That's how I like to do things on this YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoy. So today's video is going to cover, you know, certain things I noticed with my body that changed for the better when I got down to 5% body fat. Okay, these are things that I didn't even, I, I didn't really notice were happening um, until they improved when I got leaner. And the crazy thing that happened is that when I binged post-show, okay, so I, you know, my body weight went, went up relatively quickly, um, a lot of sugar, a lot of sodium, a lot of, a lot of shit food in the system. These three symptoms, all these three symptoms flared up again, pretty much instantly. And I thought, okay, I need to make a video about this. I don't know exactly what's happening or why, but I certainly need to make a video about this because this is interesting. And this is, you know, this is my body, I guess, rejecting an influx of shit food. Also, through putting on a little bit of extra body fat, certain things changed my body too. So, look, there's three things that changed very noticeably uh, for the better when I got down to 5% body fat and then came back for the worse when I, you know, pushed my body fat back up again. The first thing I'm going to talk about is... Funnily enough, my earring. Okay, well, shit, there it is. <laughs> I, um, okay, my earring, I've worn for years and years and years. Now, ever since I got it, you know, I want to wear it in my left ear. Apparently, wearing it in your right ear means you're gay. I really don't give a shit. The only ear that this fits comfortably is my right ear. When I got down to 5% body fat, I decided to put my earring in my left ear. I thought, you know what? Maybe my earlobe, the reason that I can't actually put it on this, this ear is because you tighten it up. You've got to tighten it like fully, right? And the distance between the back of the clasp and the, um, the front of the earring is only a certain amount, right? And effectively, my left earlobe must be slightly thicker than my right. So whenever I put my earring in my left earlobe and I tightened it up, a few days later, you know, every single time it would start going bad, okay? Because it's, it's pushing up. It's, it's basically, it's squeezing my earlobe whilst it's on there. It's squeezing it constantly. Whereas if I tighten it up, if I tighten it up fully on, on my right ear, it's, it's fine. It's like a slight millimeter out and it's fine. It's perfect. So the first thing that I noticed when I put my earring on, when I was 5% body fat in my left ear, is the fact that after a few days, I wasn't noticing any pain. I wasn't noticing any redness. I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about it. And I thought, what the fuck? Is my, is my ear, is, is, is it actually in that ear? And I, I, you know, I untwisted it, I had a look at it, you know, there's no, it's disgusting, but there's no pus on it, there's nothing like that, it's, it's clean, just as if it was in the right, and I'm like, well that's different. And the only thing that could have happened is the fact that, you know, going from 12, 15, 10% body fat down to 5, takes fat from your, from places that you never thought you even had it, you know what I mean? But that's a classic thing with, with bodybuilding. When you, when you start getting lean, you think you're lean, but then you can lose five more pounds and pretty much just look exactly the same. So th where did those five pounds come from? Apparently places like your earlobe. So that's the first crazy thing that I noticed. When you do get down really, really lean, you know, body fat is coming off places that you never even knew you had it, such as my earlobe. So I'm happy to say that when I am 5% body fat, I can have this earring in that ear. Voila. Problem solved. Okay. The second thing, the second thing that, that occurred um, when I dropped down to 5% body fat that improved was my wrist. 
So there is one niggly injury that I have, and I have had for about two or three years. I still don't know exactly what it is. It's t it tends to come and go. But when I'm feeling healthy, I don't know what that exact means, but when, I, when I'm feeling healthy, and, and you know, lo and behold, when I got down to 5% body fat, the pain went away. It, it, it just wasn't there. It's, it's as if, you know, when I'm at a certain level of body fat or when my body is in a certain level of inflammation through shit food or toxicity or whatever, I feel like this flares up somehow. It's almost like, it's almost like it's sliding through fine, like at the moment, but then when I add a little bit of body fat on there, it's almost like it's catching and it just hurts like hell. It's, it's, it's something to do with the nerve. Either that or I've got some sort of cyst in there that, that would, I guess, sort of reduce um, with, with the, the lesser amount of body fat surrounding it. I, I, I honestly don't know, but what I can say is that the whole entire prep, basically, whilst I was down you know, in a really lean state, this was fine. As soon as I binged, as soon as my body fat went from 5 to 10%, it came back, literally instantly. So those are two things that have happened in my body unexpectedly through getting lean and then coming back pretty much just as quick when I put on that, that five kilos of, of, of weight or, or body fat. Now, the third thing is the most interesting to me and it's the most um, trackable, I suppose you could say, and it's the thing that I was most onto okay throughout this whole entire prep and that is my heart rate i wore a fitbit i wore this exact fitbit throughout the whole entire thing i've got so much data from it it's not even funny and i enjoy looking through the data but one thing i i noticed um was my heart rate so it's clear it's pretty clear usually the fitter you are without any other factors involved the lower your heart rate is going to be at rest okay so my heart rate usually, from what I can remember before cutting down for this show, was probably in the mid 50s, you know, mid to high 50s, 57, 58. It was never really above 60, I don't think, but yeah, 57, 58. During the time that I was dieting down to 5% body fat, I found myself with a heart rate of, of as low as 46 beats per minute. 46, 47, 48, but it certainly wasn't above 50. So overall, as I got fitter, you know, as I, as I was doing more exercise, as I was getting leaner, my heart rate dropped, my resting heart rate dropped, which means that I am fitter overall. But now I'm gonna talk about when I decided to, you know, binge eat post-show. As you can expect, what, hap what do you think happened? What do you think happened? Literally, I saw day after day, my resting heart rate go up a beat, up two beats, up a beat, up a beat. It went from 47, 48, 50, 51, 54. It was literally up near 60 within a week post-show. That is all the influx of shit food, sugar, salt, fat, all of that crap, making my body fucking literally toxic. It's all that sugar fucking making my heart work, work harder. And you, I mean, what does that tell you, man? That tells you that a body that's in a constant state of an influx of all this shit food and shit, shit calories, you know, sugar, salt, oils your heart is going to be struggling you know when i when i was binge eating okay i don't you know I don't, i'm not saying everyone out there binge eats but when i was and i'd wake up in the morning feeling really really full but also you know my face feels a bit fat and i'd wake up in the morning my muscles would feel completely you know full to the brim but my face would feel really full too so i'd feel fat in the face i'd feel really sluggish and i'd look at my heart rate and it'd be up at 60 beats per minute and i just you just don't feel good you just don't feel good. And you do feel good, you do feel lean and light on your feet at a 5% body fat, but it's whether you can maintain that. And usually, you know, unless you are very, very mentally strong, it's not easy to maintain it. And I'm not gonna be able to maintain it. But I did it wrong. I smashed my body hard out after the show. Brought it up to about 96 kgs from 88. I, brought, I, then, I then went on another cut, I brought that back down from 96 down to about you know, 88, 89 once again. So literally within three weeks, and this is the reason why I'm making this video, because I confirmed it. I was at 88 kilos, 5% body fat, none of these things were happening. I go and binge, go up to 96 kg, all three of these things begin to happen. I start cutting back down again, down to about 88, 89 kg, 
lose a lot of that excess water weight, lose a lot of that excess fat, start taking in a better, a better diet with less sodium, less sugar. Lo and behold, all three of these symptoms went away. My heart rate is back down to lower than 50. My wrist is fine. You know, do you know how fucking happy I am? My wrist, bro. You need your wrists. Okay, you need your wrist to be healthy and strong, especially when you're training in the gym. And to feel that come back after not having the pain for so long, I was so disappointed. And I thought, fuck, man. It's got to have something to do with, you know, this influx of sugar and added body fat. And so I thought, man, I'm going to cut back down. And I did. And lo and behold, it's gone away. My heart rate's down below 50, like I said. And my earring, if I want, I could most probably put in my left ear. And in fact, you know what? You know what, guys? Until I'm forced, until my hand is forced by me getting too fat <laughs> or binging too often, I reckon I'm going to put this in my left ear. So you can see, you can see how how fucking tight that would be. Literally, look at the look at the thread. Look at the thread. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, you're not going to be able to see this, but the thread is literally like, I don't know, 8 mil long. So you've got to twist it up over and over and over and over again. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I am saying that it can create an earring that is extremely tight on the earlobe, right? Like I was saying. So, okay. Boom. I'm happy with that. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. This was the second to last, well, actually, was it the second to last? Uh, no. The third to last video of the series. In the next one, I'm going to be talking about what supplements I used, or didn't use, on the other hand, um, during my bodybuilding prep, because I did do it as a natural bodybuilder. And um, the final video of the series is going to be looking at what indicators I had on my body to determine whether I was getting lean or not. Okay, so when I get down to like seven, six, five percent body fat, there's certain things on your body, certain certain lines, certain indicators on my body and also on yours that will begin to, to, to tell you that you're in a certain spot. You know what I mean? Um, if you're not tracking your weight, if you're not tracking your calories, if you're not tracking anything but what you see in the mirror, there were certain things that I saw come in slowly but surely to, to tell me um, and I've seen them happen before in the past to let me know that I'm at a certain level of body fat. And that can be interesting. Um, it's useful to know. And I'll let you guys know in a coming video. So with that being said, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Peace out.